Hello everyone, hello and welcome to the first of our special videos with Let's Play Resident Evil Code Veronica X. I am the Black Shadow, and uh, well, last time we completed the main game, folks. Uh, we, we saved Claire, we, uh, well, I didn't manage to defeat Wesker, uh, if anything he was kicking our ass, but uh, fate intervened, and so Chris and Wesker will have to continue the fight and sort out the differences another day. Um, but, uh, before that happens, folks, uh, we have got a bit of business left to do with this game. Of course, the, um, the A-rank run-through with this game is gearing up. Um, I'm still working on that. I mean, I, I, I would probably advise as well as anyone's doing this, um, before you do a proper A-rank run-through, I would probably, you know, if, if you played this game, you know, play it once, sort of explore the game, I'd then probably play it a second time, um, just anyways. I wouldn't bother necessarily desperately trying to go for the four and a half um, hour limit. Um, but play for it again, you know, get a bit more familiarised with, with it, where enemies tend to come from, uh, you know, item placements, that sort of thing. Just get yourself a bit more familiarised um, and just, you know... Well, it, well, practice being quick. It, it, it might sound a bit of a strange one, but just practice sort of... Different ways and different methods of taking on particular enemies. Um, you know, hell, hell, even looking at, you know, practicing dodging enemies actually is not about it because I'll be honest with you folks, the quickest way to get past a zombie or a dog or whatever it is in this game is to dodge it. It is the quickest way. If you shoot it and you stand there fighting, it does cost time. So if whatever you can dodge is uh, a big bonus, folks. You want to dodge as much as you physically can. Um, so that's certainly something worth practicing. But before that, folks, we have got the battle game um, to deal with first, though. So um, we shall... Yeah, thanks for that, commentator. We shall... Um, well, play around with this a little bit, folks. It's a little fun little game you do get um, after beating the main game, folks. There are five different characters that you can actually use in this, folks. They all have different uh, weapon sets. Uh, you've got uh, Claire Redfield, naturally, who starts off... Um, this is default. Um, she's got a, a knife, handgun, explosive bow, um, so you know, bullets and four mixed herbs. Um, just so you know, all weapons in this game are infinitely loaded, so we know which one we're going to be using there. Uh, when you beat the, the original Claire's one, um, you will then get access to an alternate Claire Redfield. Uh, alternate costume, alternate weapons, um, all three types of the grade launcher rounds, well, bow, bow gas. Um, and also the assault rifle. Only the one herb there, though. Christopher Redfield um, also makes the default list. Um, he starts off with the Holy Magnum um, and the shotgun, if you fancy playing around with that, but it's not really any point. The Magnum kind of one-hit kills just about everything. Stephen Burnside uh, also makes an appearance in this. Uh, he is what you unlock by uh, getting hold of the Luger replica with Chris in the military train facility. With the uh, the desk uh, drawer puzzle, with the little um, you know opening the three drawers in succession to get open up the brown drawer, or, uh, whatever part that was. But if you get hold of that, you get hold of access to Steve. Uh, we get submachine guns, and also the only time you ever get to use working gold lugers, uh, which have their uses, or so I'm told. I, I never believed in them much, but apparently they're pretty good. Two full wheels, not too bad. Uh, you know, Chris got two as well actually, for that matter. And last. And certainly, no means least, possibly one of the hardest minigame playthroughs, I think, in, in Resident Evil. Albert Wesker. Just the knife. Not even that much help, folks. Just the knife. Now, I am... I have been informed that apparently in certain uh, versions and consoles or versions of this game that... Uh, some versions, Wesker does actually start off with a, a, with a linear launcher. Um, however, in this version, the PS2 version at least, he doesn't. He has a knife. And this game mode is pretty freaking merciless because uh, the, uh, the process of this game, pretty simple. Uh, make your way through a, a chain of rooms. There are a variety of enemies in each of them, varying from anything from zombies, bandersnatches, Hunters and the poisonous hunters, which uh, are actually known as sweepers, but uh, I just call them bastards. Um, and you must defeat all enemies in order to move on to the next room. There are 18 rooms, I believe, and in the 18th room, uh, a character will take on uh, their own boss, um, 
as well. Uh, and I don't remember exactly who's got what. Actually, I'm thinking about it. Let's see. Uh, original Claire has got Nosferatu on the uh, on the, the, the helipad at the Antarctic base. Um, the alternate Claire's actually got a really interesting one. She actually takes on the uh, tyrant folks, like in the back of the seaplane, except she also takes that on on the helipad. Tricky fight that as well. Uh, Chris gets to take on the final two bosses of the game, both forms of Alexia. A fun one, that. Uh, Steve gets to take on um, the uh, the gulp worm. I think it is actually known as, not the sandworm, whatever I was calling it. Uh, the one that kills Rodrigo at, at the uh, bottom of the uh, train facility. And Wesker gets to reenact the fight that he has during the main game, folks. And he gets to take on the, the first form of Alexia in the mansion replica place. Except that's not a fun fight, potentially, but uh, never mind. Um, now, obviously, folks, you guys know me. Those of you who have who are BS Inc. regulars will know that, obviously, this run is going to be coming down later on the line. However, it is extraordinarily tough. I mean, I have done this before. Um, a long time ago, I have done this. I have beaten it. Of course, can't prove that, but... Uh, now is the glory of the internet. Although, before you consider taking on that, you do need to, um, to certainly uh, practice this game mode a lot, folks. And if anyone's playing along and is 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 considering doing the Wesker fight, my goodness, um, please, 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 play as a lot of people first. Know what's around, and just when you do get there, pray. Oh my grief! It wouldn't be so bad actually if you could just dodge. The fact you have to kill everything. And once I start saying that you've got to start knifing hunters, I think that pretty much sums up the story. So what we're going to do is I'm not going to run through every single playthrough. I'm going to do sort of one in particular. Um, I'm going to do Steve's action. And then what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably then going to just sort of um, add in everyone's final boss fights uh, while I'm at it as well. Um, just for a uh, complete purpose. You don't want to see me do the whole thing four times. I mean, it's ridiculous, so... I'm going to do it as Steve, um, because why not? I want to play around the Gold Lucas bit, actually, anyway. So uh, so we're going to do it with Steve. And also, um, very unique uh, to this game, folks, you can actually do this in first-person mode as um, if you really want to. Um, you move around in first-person. Once you start aiming, you go into a first-person view, which is kind of cool, a bit of a novelty. Um, I have heard you can only unlock that if you actually um, kill Nosferatu with the sniper rifle. And unlock that little scene that plays out, but I don't know if that's true or not, because I've always done that anyway, so, you know. But I'm just going to do this normally for now. Well, that's the introduction over with then. <laughs> oh, dear me. Alright then, folks. So, is a case, how quickly can you do it? Now, I have been told that these Lugas are pretty darn good on normal zombies. That's not, not too bad. They're quite... They have a heavy recoil on them, as you can see. But they're not too bad, actually. No, they're not too... Sit down. They're not too shabby, actually. Let's see, you've got 18 rooms, um, and you've got to get through as quickly as you can. Um, in order to get the high... Um, I'll, I'll touch upon the ranks uh, later on, but let's just play for it just for now, and just get a feeling for what we're doing with. Now, there are barrels here, which I... I'm going to have to fuck around with here. I didn't really want to do this. Come on! There we go, that's a good start. These Lugas, they've got a bit of a kick to them. I don't know whether to use these, those, or just stick with the um, submachine guns, though, thinking about it. Oh, uh, there's a guy here on the floor as well, just, just finish him off, he's not too bad. Oh, uh, what you also come across is a lot of areas you will find, uh, there is still actually health items around. Um, which, there's no harm in taking um, taking those as you go along. Not much though, usually it's just the odd herb here and there. The occasional first aid spray, that's about it. Not much uh, to go along with. Banner snatch in here, folks. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, there's no real way to take these on very easily, except kill one and just go with that. Once you take out one, it's not so bad. But that did, that did a little bit of damage. Yeah, but that hurt. There's a third one that will come across the um, 
come across the back alleyway there, but just deal with him. Uh, if you check in these little foam boxes, there is first aid spray. First uh, four that come to mind. Um, not every door does unlock, folks. Um, for those of you who remember the uh, the, um, the the extra games that we did, it's a bit like yeah, it's a bit kind of a cross between. Um, actually, it's a bit like for those of you who remember Resident Evil Outbreak File Two with the uh, extra game mode we had in that game, where you sort of go around all the rooms and they don't connect properly. Um, it's a bit like that, really. Except your armor's unlimited this time. That guy's got um, explosives on him. Just a load of zombies in here. Nothing too much. There we go, I deal with him. A few more zombies around the corner. Try not to get um, caught by them. There you go. You can be, obviously be very, very liberal in your um, weapon usage. Very liberal. Oh, whoa, wrong button, wrong button. I'm sorry, I complete mispress there. Not very good. Stay down. Put me on bleeding, you bastard. Well, bleeding? Sorry, it's because I was saying about um, Resident Evil Outbreak, sorry. Bleeding. Goodness me. Oh, you, no, you don't. Yeah, I've started to notice that sometimes. Oh, he did it there. He did the little cross arm. Yes, I wanted to show that to you guys. The old cross arm. I, I do like it when he does it at the submachine gun. It's really cool. I wanted to show that in the main game, but uh, unfortunately I was unable to. But yeah, you can do it. If you sort of, while you're changing targets, occasionally he'll do that cross arm thing. Kind of cool. It's kind of more cosmetic than anything. Hunters! Luckily, submachine gun, really good for that because it, when you shoot, it interrupts the attack animation. Really, really useful that. Make good use of it. Really, really useful. Gold loopers are not the way to go. It is, it is submachine guns all the way with those guys. Uh, just the one green herb from here, if I remember correctly. Just going to use that as now as well, just to get him up to full health properly. So we'll pop in through here. More hunters. There's one on your right side there, and there is another that's coming round, which is that one. There we go. There we are. Nicely dealt with. Yeah, that's a fucking sweeper there as well. Not fun. Take the green earth. Which is good. We'll mosey on round here. Um, well, because this is just a little... I'm just going to have a look around here. Ah, oh, there is. Yeah, there is a blue herb there as well, if you require that. Um, really, generally speaking, for a lot of people, the, the health doesn't really matter too much. The only person that is is going to be need to make real a lot of use of all this health is the Wesker run through um, because of, he's only got a freaking knife. Taking on sweepers with a knife, you've got to be either insane or desperate to um, to have to do that. And unfortunately, as far as battle games concerned, you do have to be both. Very brave to do, ha be able to do that. A few zombies down here. Nice and liberal. There we go. Goodbye. It's just a little. This is just a little. Um, just to show you guys um, what what's what basically. Um, because when I do this more properly, especially with Wesker run through, I mean, you know, it's it's different circumstances. He's dead. There is no question about that. There's uh, about five, six zombies in here, actually, in this one. You've got those three there, and then you've got... If you come in here, there's one on the right who's on the stairs, usually. I think he's dead. Uh, you got a fifth one down here. And then the real noise is the sixth one. He's actually hiding down here, folks. Yeah, he's a bit pain in the ass. He's just hiding there. Anything up here, folks, uh, by the way, thinking about it? Oh, he went the wrong way. How about it? He went the complete wrong way. What's that about? Now, here's just a, just a mass of zombies here. About six of them. Um, but, yeah, not really... Really, to be honest, folks, it, it, it's never really about making sure you survive, really, with most characters. It's more about um, just making 
It's, it's trying to kill them as quickly as you can. Is what it really, really boils down to in the end. Nothing, nothing really much more than that. I don't think there's anything hiding in any of these little slits, is there? Eh, don't know. I'll, I'll probably do a more in-depth run um, before I do the, the, the West Coast. I'll talk about that a little bit later, actually. Uh, we'll head into the uh, to the doctor's quarters, where there is uh, again a healthy dosage of zombie trouble. Oh, unlimited submachine guns. Right, Much more fun than using gold losers. I, 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 I sort of like. I, 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 I just, I'm just saying that right now. A lot more fun. Right, before we head through this door, check on this little left bit here for first aid spray number two. Actually, we need to actually know about you here. I'm not sure I've already taken any damage, but uh, I'm going to do it because I need to clear some space for the, for the rest of the first aid sprays I know about. That barrel will kill the vast majority of the zombies in this room. One or two of these guys might get up, and there is one hiding right there. Very easy to fall for. We got a there is a there's a blue herb there, which you want. Now both of these doors, um, you can enter either of these doors. Uh, one carries you on through the uh, well, the brown one carries on to where you need to go. But if you want to head into the silver one for a little bonus room, you can do. Now, in this room, there's a few bits and pieces you can get hold of. Um, there is, well, oh look, the curtains are drawn. Um, there are, if you inspect uh, here, there's a couple green herbs sitting on this side here. The important thing you're after, though, is the slot machine, the Kingmaker. You can actually use it in this. And every character can use this. And, um, oh, he's having some trouble. There you go, Steve. And it will reveal a special item for you folks. Now, it might be a useful item for you, like maybe some health or it's a, a particular weapon. It, it's, it's fixed for each character. However, you can either get that or you might instead get hold of a special diary. The DIJ's diary. And because I'm not worried, I'm just going to read for this because, you know, we can. It's the introduction playthrough, if you will. During a heavy squall, a girl in a red outfit was brought to this island of Rockford. My home. What could she possibly have done? I've been living here quite some time now, but many who are brought to this island seldom leave alive. But through the sounds of guns and fire, soldiers appeared. There was something going on. I went to the prison, but the girl in red was nowhere in sight. I hurried to the military training facility. The man of Rockford was attacking her relentlessly. How stupid I got too close and almost got myself smashed by the shutters. But thanks to my natural agility, I was able to get out of the situation and get outside. Anyone other than me would not have been so lucky. Again, I was able to find the girl in red. There she was, in front of the residence. Then from behind her appeared a man with blonde hair. As he called to her, he approached her in a friendly manner and started saying something to her. And it ended, it happened abruptly, it ended. The man with the blonde girl started to hurt the girl in red. I have to save her, I thought to myself. But the man with the blonde hair went away. Who was that blonde haired man? What did he want from the girl in red? Anyone's guessed who's, who's writing this? Because if you haven't played this and know who's writing this, then well done. Uh, the self destruct announcement and emergency siren warned the end of Rockford Island. I hurried to the hangar of the transport. The transport we were on took off as everything exploded into flames. With my neck risking effort, the girl in red slammed the monster out in the open sky on the plane. Sure enough, she was a Valkyrie, a goddess of destruction. I couldn't believe it. The transport landed in a base on the icy Antarctica. And on top of it all, the transport that landed before us spilled tons of T-Virus and everything alive had turned into zombies. If I stayed, there was no way I could get, could stay alive. If, if I stayed, there was no way I could stay alive. Ooh, dodgy English. I had to find a way to get out of there quickly. I pied with the girl in red, and I started searching the base to see if there was anything I could use. As I was resting in the dark, someone was coming. Whatever it was, it was right there. The door suddenly closed, and there was no escape. I kept slamming the doors, and then the door opened. I exploded out of there, but I was no chicken. 
I stopped to turn around, and there she was. The girl in the red, standing there, looking at me. What was this place? I was stuck in a room with an elevator and an old canoe. Where was I supposed to go? I felt stranded. I felt endless despair. Then that blonde-haired man with the sunglasses appeared. He had that girl on an arm lock. Then a man in a black vest came running after them. The man with the blonde hair disappeared into the prison cell with the girl. The man in black followed them. I also hurried to chase after. It was a grueling fight, head to head. Was the man who knew that girl also a monster? The fight looked like it could last forever. Yeah, right. Then suddenly there was an explosion which interfered the fight. That was the last chance I had to get out of there. I snuck through the hatch and the sub just as it was about to close. Finally, I was released from a world of death, and I was able to come back to a world where desire and power ruled. The IJ. Now, if anyone is wondering who the hell ripped that, I give you one clue. This, no, it was this one. I kept, I kept slamming the doors, then the door opened. Exploded out of there, but I stopped to turn around and she was there, the girl in red, looking at me. Now that is referring to um, when Claire first arrived in the Antarctic base. I'm pretty sure this is what it's referring to. There was that banging on the locker. And we opened it. And a mouse jumped out. If my, um, if my analysis is correct, then a, uh, a rat writ this memo. Yeah. The infamous DIJ Diary, courtesy of Black Show Incorporated. Right, well that's where, with, with seven minutes of my life uh, that I'm never going to get back gone, let us actually carry on with my playthrough. Well, the little test run. I want to get that shown now because it's the only time I'm ever going to get to show it, so... I'll do it now on the playthrough that doesn't matter how long I take, but the timing does not make a darn bit of difference. Now this room's not fun. Oh, he's right there. That was a bit near enough where he'd be. I think he's dead. Six, yeah, there's a hunter in there. So be careful about that. Uh, this open lock on the right, there is a third first aid spray there. Sweeper. Yeah, bye. Goodbye. There deal with him. And if we head through um, this door here, it'll take us in back in, back down here, folks. About six, seven zombies here. You know, again, if you've got these infant weapons, they're not a problem. It's when you, you know, it, I mean, I, I hope guys here are, are watching this and thinking to uh, ahead of, to like the uh, the Wesker playthrough, and are thinking, whoa, my goodness me, how are we supposed to get through half of this with a knife? Um, and it is a pretty legitimate question. Pretty legitimate question. So we're swinging through here. This takes us to um, this bit here. Shoot the barrels. And there's about like four or five zombies here, which will all just get cooked by those explosions. Very rarely, one might like not get caught, but it's very rare. Just take them out, nice and easy. I'm sure you can see the guy with the explosives. That's the target. There you go. There's occasionally the odd one or two that um, won't die immediately from it. Nothing wrong about that. Did you, Steve, turn for goodness sake. There you go. 16 minutes. This, this is such a slow one, but I mean, I'd spent about six minutes reading the diary, so at least if, if not more. So. Uh, and this is the penultimate room right here. Three bander snatches. But with dual aiming, not a problem. And that's the uh, the fourth and that's the fourth first aid spray sitting right there. Um, which I can't grab because I've got no space. You wanna head through this door, and going through this door will take each character to their respective um, boss fight. So I'll uh, I'll show off Steve's right on. And he has got the gold one, folks, as I mentioned earlier on. 
Except with the dual submachine guns, I mean, it's not really any more difficult than it was um, playing this as Ow, Chris. And in fact, you got so much more health. It, it's not that tough. Pretty. I'd probably argue this is probably one of the easiest boss fights of the lot, actually. But that's just my opinion. Steve, turn around. What is with your aiming today? Goodness me. You're making me look bad. But yeah, you know, just same sort of premise as you were doing during the uh, the main game, folks. Just, um, yeah, just, just shoot at him whenever he appears. Doesn't do anything particularly special. And soon enough, he will kill over and die. Come on, any time today. Shoot in the back. Ooh, that was quite close. He does seem to take a fair amount of damage, to be fair. He takes, it feels like he takes more than he did um, fighting against Chris. Or maybe that's just me, I don't really know. Ow! Nearly put me on a caution, how dare you. But yeah, again, yeah, it's, it, it, to be honest, there's not really a lot to comment on here, folks, is there really? I do apologise, but, but there isn't really. I mean, it's not like we're trying to save Rodrigo's life. You know, we're just killing the damn thing. And victory is ours. And that's the battle game, folks, in, uh, in a nutshell, really. Um, it went into complete one, they also get their own little, um, picture. So this is Chris with, um, Chris. This is Steve with his, um, his mum and dad. His dad, you may well recognise as well. Um, nice picture. Yeah, and he ranking, because I spent fucking forever doing that. <laughs> um, now the rankings are really, really strange on folks. I I'll be honest with you. The details surrounding those are a little bit shady as you look online. Basically, they don't seem to be much reliant on what you do. It, the only seem, criteria it seems to be basically how fast can you do this, and to get hold of the um, like the A ranks that you need in particular for the achievement on the on the uh, on the um, what you it on the um, the uh, that, the remastered versions or like the 360 and such. Um, if you want to get an A ranking, you have to go like the clappers. You really do. Um, there's only one mode where time is not really an issue, and that is with Wesker. Um, because the time limit is so freaking generous. Basically, complete it, you get an A ranking. <laughs> Basically, and if you don't complete it within the time limit, it's because you're dead. Um, pretty much is how it goes, folks. So, it's, it's A or nothing, but, uh, man. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, well, I'll quickly show you little tiny bits and pieces of, of, of all the other cat, these three other characters. I'll show you their bosses, um, and uh, then that'll probably be the end of this video, actually. To be fair. There's, there's not much more to it, to be honest. Um, to be fair, I mean, to be honest, they're all pretty simple, actually, I mean, as far as weapons to use. Um, I mean, Claire, just use the explosive bow gun, destroy everything. Um, Chris, just use the Magnum, destroy everything. Um, Claire's an interesting one, actually, um, as far as using her weaponry is concerned. Um, you want, it's about the only character I could probably recommend that changing your equipment around might have something of a benefit. Um, I mean, the grenade rounds are kind of not that great. Uh, you want to use the flame rounds on zombies, which will be one hit killed. And also the Bandersnatches, which, interestingly, they die in one shot as well to a flame round, which I didn't know. Um, but that appeared to be the um, case when I was going through, so um, that's that's a, that's a strategy you can use. Acid rounds on the hunters traditionally still the most effective, and that continues to be. This assault rifle might have its uses as well, folks, as well. To be to be honest, so I'm going to meet you all um, at uh, the boss fights for both Claire's and Chris, and I'll show you the best way to deal with those folks. So I will see you in a second. Oh yeah, folks. Yeah. Two sex. All right then, folks. So, uh, so this is um, standard Claire. Uh, this is the equipment I've got of her. 
Why would you bother? Seriously. Um, you've got the... Hold on a sec, the sound's not right. Hold on. There you go, I hope that's... Does that sound wrong? No, no, it just didn't sound right there. I do apologise for that. Anyways, okay, so... So, um, so this is with Claire. She's got the normal bow gun. Um, her boss fight is the standard Osferatu fight. No sniper rifle to use here, unfortunately. But, uh... To be honest, that's not really much of a worry, folks. All you really need to do with this fight is get close enough to him. Watch out he doesn't hit you, though. Behind's not a bad place to go. And just obliterate with the bow gun. And just keep going. And occasionally he might stagger a bit if you catch him when he's, like, um, trying to attack. And keep going and going. And then eventually he'll just keel over and die. Easy as that. As easy as that, folks. Easiest boss fight of the lot, without question. Without question. Um, yeah, that was an early run through. I, I, I was a little bit so I wanted to get a drink. Okay. Please. Ugh. All right then. So that's Claire one down. So I suppose next to do is alternate Claire. And same area, much tougher fight. <laughs> Right, okay, and I'm pausing immediately on this one. So this is um, alternate clear. Um, this is the setup I've got with her. You can only have up to the four heels. Um, now you can tell from the music that we've got to fight the tyrant that we fought in the back of the, um, the airplane. Except that we've got to fight this guy on the helipad. Now, I'm going to be really honest with you guys. I haven't really devised a good way of fighting him. This may be over very quickly. The problem with fighting this guy is that he will knock you off if you're not careful and if you give him half a chance. The problem is what is because of your sight, you can't see a fecking thing that you're doing. The best thing I can really suggest you do is get the assault rifle and just keep running circles around him. Don't let him near you. The moment he gets near you, he will start swinging. The moment he starts swinging, you're dead. He will knock you off so fast, you won't even know it. Use the L1 button for auto tracking if you can't see what you're doing, which, normally speaking, you can't. Don't bother too much about the assault rifle, simply because the, well, the grenade launcher, because you can't see what you're doing. And also, um, the, the grenade launcher will drop. Where is he? Oh, God. Whoa, go away, Jesus. Sorry. Um, with the grenade launcher, the problem is, is that the grenade launcher shots will drop. So, you know, just, just stick the assault rifle. It, th no, they hits him automatically because of the hit scanning and stuff that games use. Just don't let him near you. The moment he starts swinging, you're in major trouble. I mean, you can easily hit you once, knock you off, that's it. But he's dead! We won! Apparently. Apparently. That's about the guess that I can advise of that, folks. Goodness me. Um, this is um, uh, Claire, the alternate Claire's um, one. It's kind of like evil Claire because she's kind of like running on that stuff. But the observant viewer, when they're playing the game, might realize there's some writing on the sides of those trunks. And it reads, Umbrella. I've got a C ranking. That's, that's not too bad. Even with a bit of dilly-dallying around um, in the middle. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, well, third, uh, third up here will be Chris. Um, now, again, playing through his game is so... He's just magnum everything. One, one shot death. The gun can pierce as well and take out more than one enemy. Easy as you like. The boss fight, on the, on the other hand, can be a bit on the tricky side. All right, then. So, Chris gets the slightly unenviable task of taking on the final boss of the game. But we've got an infinite magnum, folks. We can do what we wish, almost. Um, now, there's two ways of going about this, folks. Best way, really, is just stand and just keep shooting it. You don't want to continue to do it all the time, though. Eventually, these little bug things will start ganging up on you a little bit. So, it does. there's no harm in just... Stopping every other now and again. Now you can see even shoot them if you wish. But generally speaking, all you really want to do is just keep shooting. 
Keep an eye on your health, those who are doing it, because as you may remember from fighting this in the actual main game, damage does get accumulated very quickly. Very quickly. I think we're on danger. Oh, not far from it. Um, it takes quite a few magnum shots, actually, to take out, to be fair. It takes uh, a fair amount of punishment and just heal as you go along. It's not too, it's not that bad. Just try not to get hit by those freaking giant vines uh, while, you're, while you're at it. And it's just making sure you don't get yourself too ganged up into like a corner um, like that. Because that can happen sometimes. That can get quite nasty. Ow, don't you spit shit at me. I'm on danger. Oh goodness, that's not supposed to happen. But just keep doing it. Eventually... Oh, in that. But see, now it starts getting a little bit annoying uh, when you start getting really ganged up on. Wow, the actual vine mist. That's that's pretty pathetic. And after a while, it will go down. It's just a matter of just, just give, putting in enough punishment. Oh, I'm in trouble. But it does use a lot of health, unfortunately. There's not really many ways of fighting this without taking much damage, um, unfortunately. But there we go. Eventually, it will um, separate, and now you get to take on final boss of the game without the linear launcher I would just like to add folks it's still locked in there now fighting this actual boss without the linear launcher is quite an interesting task the problem you will have with fighting um, Alexia though here is that it's shooting it's difficult see shooting like that just straight onwards it's not really good enough because the thing is flying you're not gonna hit it problem is aiming just straight up Again, you're going to struggle to hit it a lot of times unless you're right next to it, which, generally speaking, you're not. So there's a little tactic, uh, a little trick which I actually do employ in this game. I've used it quite a lot through the LP, and people may not have noticed it, though. I don't, there isn't really a name for it, but it, I, I kind of... It's, it's, it's basically... And I've used it actually in different Resident Evil games as well, folks, and it basically involves... Um, change your objective, because as you're aiming here, when you aim up and you aim down, it's not instant, folks. And when you're doing it, while getting myself set on fire, there is a slight opportunity to adjust, um, just adjust where you're aiming, folks. And what it basically involves, I'll show you in a second, just stop spitting fire at me. It basically, as I'm aiming up, as I go, if I switch to aim up, and if I shoot while I'm doing it, folks, I sort of shoot in the midpoint of raising the gun. And all of a sudden, instead of shooting like straight ahead or like up like 70 degrees, Suddenly you can shoot in the middle, and it just alters the trajectory of your shot, folks. It does work as well. If you practice it with, like, using the bow gun, you'll notice that, like, um, the projectiles of that, and the grenade launcher as well, you'll notice the project the um, trajectory is very different. It's not an easy thing to... It's not easy um, to get right, though. It takes, uh, even myself, I, it's, very, it's very hard to get right. It's a very, very small amount of time to do it in. It's very easy to either overdo it or underdo it. But it does work, folks, and it can make your life quite a lot easier sometimes. See, like, shooting there doesn't work, straight up doesn't work, but just doing that little flick and shooting in the middle, it hits it. Really, really effective um, tactic to use with a lot of weapons, not just this one. And there you go. It makes it a lot easier. Practice it with stuff like the bow gun or the grenade launcher, and you sort of get a feel for how it works. Then start experimenting with, with actual gunfire, and it, it actually becomes quite a useful little option in the right situation. It's quite handy, actually. Pretty cool. But that's uh, that's Chris's uh, one. Uh, he's not too bad. The only hard part, really, is the boss fight. Other than that, it's so easy. Just mag them. Everything's a joke. Um, yeah, again, earlier run through, I was... Again, I was I was screwing around doing a couple bits and pieces in the middle, just sort of practicing stuff, so hey. Alright then, so that is the four um, battle game bosses for you there. Now that leaves a certain Albert Wesker. Now Albert Wesker is a very, very special case. I'm I'm gonna be doing this uh I was considering actually doing the A-level playthrough and then doing this afterwards, but, uh, you know, I'm going to do this one first because I'm kind of already in the groove of, of doing the battle game, folks. Um, 
Albert Wesker is so hard, it is a joke. Um, but anyone who can say that they've done it, uh, a round of applause goes to them, because this is so seriously tough. Um, now, uh, one thing that does make it easier, folks, there is one thing about him that makes things easier. It's only to do with the boss fight, folks, when you fight um, Alexia. Now, I've mentioned about like the grabbing thing, if she grabs you, you're dead. If you're lucky, when you do the um, the, uh, the the slot, slot machine thing, what you can get with Wesker sometimes is you'll get hold of a fully loaded magnum. Not infinite, but six shots. And if you remember for the main game, and the actual main game, six shots is all you need to take out Alexia on that final boss. So if you get that, the final boss is fine. The problem is getting there. And next time on Let's Play Resident Evil Code Veronica Correct, we will begin tackling Albert Wesker's battle game on Code Veronica. This is going to be hell. I'll see you then.